Ringo. For those of you who don't know, Ken Barry, the voice of Postman Pat, died this year. So I'm here to pay tribute to him in the best way I know how, to talk about the show Postman Pat, written by John Cunliffe, the original creator, writer and presenter of Rosie and Jim, and directed by Ivor Woods, who worked on other famous shows such as The Magic Roundabout, The Herbs, The Wombles and many others, it was about the life adventures of the friendly postman in the village of Greendale. It didn't do anything other children's television shows like Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and many others did where it was heroes and villains. It focused on everyday life of a friendly postman in the British countryside. It ran for seven series of 167 episodes, got a spin-off show and a big screen movie and left a huge impact on many people who watched it. But which episodes are the best? Which ones are the funniest, most influential and all around just the most entertaining of all time? Well, many people have their own personal favourite episodes, Darling44. What are your favourite episodes? Well, today we're going to have a look at my top 10 favourite episodes from Postman Pat Sid. So, sit back and enjoy my top 10 favourite Postman Pat episodes. Number 10. Postman Pat's Difficult Day. Pat's alarm clock fails to wake him up and he runs late on his rounds and gets into all sorts of scrapes along the way. Like nearly forgetting his hat on his rounds, tripping over and his hat ending up on Jess, getting into a muddle with Ted Glenn's messy parcels of spare parts like cogs and screws and nuts and bolts and what have you, and even getting into a scrape with Alf Thompson's ladder, injuring his leg having to have the post delivered by Sam Warden instead. This episode is definitely one of the funniest ones I've seen because it shows what might happen if Postman Pat ever ran late on his rounds. And the Postman Jess Finn still cracks me up to this day. What are you playing at, Jess? Do you think you're Postman Jess or something? <laughs> Postman Jess! <laughs> Pat doesn't have to solve any problems or anything like that in this one. It's just an episode showing what might happen if our friendly Postman ever ran late on his rounds and ever had a bad day. Sorry, Alf. Hang on. Hold it steady! Not that way, the other way. I said the other way! Oh! Ouch! Number 9. Postman Pat's Foggy Day. There was a thick fog in Greendale. Pat stops at the post office to have a cup of tea and a biscuit. But when the post finally arrives and Pat goes back on his round, he ends up getting lost and feels silly when he thinks the scarecrow is Ted and gives him a letter. But the main highlight of this episode is when Jess goes missing and Pat goes out to find him in the fog. And when he eventually finds Jess, they end up getting lost in the fog as well. So it's up to Reverend Timms and Miss Hubbard to send them back to the church. This is one of the few episodes of the show that takes place really early morning before it gets really light and there's huge fog about. And the bit with Pat thinking that the scarecrow is Ted still cracks me up to this day. Pat walked up very quietly so as not to disturb the rabbits and touched Ted on the shoulder. Ted didn't move. Pat put the letter in Ted's pocket. He still didn't move. Pat gave him a nudge. Oh, it was a scarecrow. This reminds me of the time Sweet Miss took a parrot for a robin. He's a real sausage brain. Indeed he is, Sue. And I think we've all had this experience. 
when we're trying to drive through a thick fog and we get lost and can't see the way through and we have to ask people for directions, all that sort of thing. It's just Pat being put in a real life situation on a really foggy day. And it's still entertaining to this day forward. Pat did feel silly. He was glad no one saw him. Number 8. Press when Pat's finding day. Pat calls to the post office, and today most of the post is for Katie and Tom Pottish because it's their birthday. But Katie feels really sad today because she's lost her favourite doll, Sarah Ann. So Pat goes on a mission to find her while still going on his rounds. He looks in the church and finds a glove belonging to Dorothy Thompson. He goes to Dorothy Thompson's house and finds Ted Glenn's penknife. He goes to Ted Glenn's workshop to have a look but finds Miss Hubbard's watch. Then he goes to Miss Hubbard's house where Sam from Smobile's shop is and eventually finds Sarah Ann hiding behind the chocolates in Sam's back. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, bud. I once lost my favourite teddy bear. Oh, dear, did you ever find it in the end, Sue? Sooty was my lost teddy bear. Oh, makes sense. This was the first ever episode of Postman Pat that aired and it was also the first time we saw just how helpful and friendly Pat was going out of his way to look for a lost doll while still going on his rounds. It just makes him a really likeable character from this first episode to the rest of the series. And I think all postmen in real life should be like this. So whether postmen in real life will ever be as helpful as him, this episode started the whole phenomenon of Postman Pat. Found anything? Oh, yes, a bump on the head. Number seven. Postman Pat's Rainy Day It was a heavy rainy day in Greendale. Even the letters are wet when Pat goes to the post office to collect them. And once he goes on his rounds, the rain stops, but he sees the effects of the rain. Like Peter Fogg getting his tractor stuck in the mud and having to get a new tractor to pull the old one out. The children having fun with the puddles in the playground. And a landslide in the boat. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. I love rainy days. It's so much fun splashing in puddles. The real excitement of this episode comes when Pat comes to the roadblock. When Alf Thompson tries to get through it on his tractor but fails. Then his son Bill sends an airplane with a message to Greendale Farm to get help. And then finally Peter Fogg comes in with his new tractor with a bulldozer blade to get rid of the blockage. Even though it doesn't exactly rain throughout the whole episode, it's just an interesting look at what Postman Pat's rounds would be like after or during a rainy day. And the events here are so funny that you'll be entertained all the way through. It's a great episode with bad weather that you're going to enjoy to this day. It's nice to see someone enjoying the rain. Number 6. Postman Pat and the Hole in the Boat. Mr. Pringle has been teaching the children about volcanoes and earthquakes. Then the next day, Pat discovers a little hole in the boat that's been blocked by P.C. Selby. But the ridiculous thing about it is it is such a small pothole that it's just so ridiculous to make such a huge fuss over. Is this what all the fuss is about? <laughs> it doesn't look much to me. I've seen bigger. A baby one. Matthew once punched a tire in the hole in the road. He had to call the AA. Oh, how did that go? Badly, he had no idea Sooty and Sweep had got a part-time job with the AA at the time. And it was my introduction to Arthur Selby. Probably one of the funniest policemen that's ever existed. Now then, now then, what's going on there? Look out, here comes trouble. Come on, legs. You know this road's closed. You must have seen the signs. I'll have to take your names and addresses. Don't be daft, Arthur. You've known us ever since we were in short trousers. Never mind that. We have to do it proper. Now then, how do you spell proceeding? Uh, you haven't got a pencil sharpener on you by any chance? Nothing extremely exciting really happens in this episode, but it's an interesting look at what a pothole this situation might be like in Greendale. And it's especially hilarious how Arthur takes such a tiny pothole so seriously. It's an entertaining episode with entertaining characters and an entertaining police officer. And the ending is so funny that you'll be laughing on the floor. I think there are two E's in proceeding. But is it a C or an S? Number 5. Postman Pat takes a message. 
It has been wild and windy in Greendale and the telephone lines are down. And the Reverend Timms is off to see his sister in London and is about to catch a train. But when Pat arrives at the post office, they get a phone call asking the postman to send a message to the Reverend Timms saying that she'll be arriving in Greendale. So Pat has to drive all the way through the village to find the Reverend Timms and tell him before he catches the train. And the ways he tries to get to him are so hilarious. First he tries to drive through the fields in his van but gets blocked with a trailer. Then he walks up to Miss Hubbard's house and borrows her bicycle to get to Ted Glenn's workshop. And he crashes the bike into Ted's workshop and has to go on roller skates the rest of the way. It's just hilarious to see Pat going outside his van for a while and the many attempts he'll get through to, to get to the Reverend Tim's before he catches the train. And I just can't get enough of seeing Pat in those roller skates. How do you stop? And who the hell could ever forget Pat driving like a lunatic through the village? I haven't seen driving as fast as that since Sooty challenged a stick to a race. Oh, Sooty challenged a stick to a race once, did he? And who was the winner in the end? Sooty won by a photo finish. Oh, I always thought the stick would win in a race against Sooty. Not to mention that nice little song about Jess the cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. And it's always been like that. And it's always been like that. Always been like that. Always been like that. Been like that. It's another funny episode where Pat has a race against time to stop the vicar from making a mistake. Oh dear. I couldn't do this every day. Number four. Postman Pat and the Big Surprise. Pat does some gardening before work. When he tries to remove a weed, he sprains his back and Sarah calls Dr. Gilbertson in. My back. Oh, it does not hurt. Here, let me straighten you up. Ow! Ow! Oh, stop, it's worse like that. Good night, everybody. That's what happens when you bend your back too much. The same thing happened to Richard the last time he tried to clean the gutter. Pat needs to spend a day in bed so Sarah offers to take the post instead. Everyone is surprised to see Sarah delivering the post instead of Pat. Sarah has also forgotten something. This is definitely one of the interesting episodes where we see Pat actually not be able to take the post out for a change. And it was nice to have his wife Sarah have the spotlight for a change as well. Also, it's kind of funny how she wears that hat in comparison to how big her hair is. I mean, that hat doesn't even fit on her for crying out loud. It's a very interesting episode with an interesting change of postman, or lady in this case, and it still entertains me to this day. Number three. Letters on ice and Postman Pat goes sledging. What? Is it not cheating, Darling 44? Putting two episodes into one number? Well, let me explain. I like these episodes so much that I just couldn't have them separate. Plus, if I did, it would make this the top 11 list. In Letters on Ice, Postman Pat tries to deliver his letters to other people but can't get through a snow block, so he has to skate across the ice with a pair of skates that Ted Glenn lends him. It's quite interesting to see Postman Pat go ice skating for a change rather than walking. And it's very funny to see him almost losing his balance every time. <laughs> Special ice delivery today. And in Postman Pat goes sledging, Peter Fogg is clearing the roads of snow, but there's just one bit of snow on the road that's so heavy that Peter Fogg had to turn back which leaves Pat no choice but to go on a sledge with Alf Thompson to deliver George Lancaster's and stuff to him, and feed his sheep as well. And the journey back on the sledge is the most hilarious part in the episode. We'll have a fast ride downhill. Give us a push. Hold on, here we go. Hold on, Pat. Help. Oh, 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 oh dear. You all right, Pat? All in one piece, I think. Well, I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but I'm a champion snowball fighter. 
So even though these are two separate episodes, I had to put them on the list as one because they're both as entertaining as each other. And they're both snow-based episodes. And those two rarely fail to make me laugh. This snow can't last forever. Number two. Postman Pat and the Magpie Hit. It's such a lovely day and Pat's getting on so well with his round that he stops for a picnic lunch near Thompson Ground. But Mrs. Thompson's hens have other ideas. Some steal Pat's sandwiches, and another one steals Pat's keys and puts them in his nest. So Pat has to go up there with a ladder to get his keys back. And while he does that, he finds loads of other shiny objects, almost like it was a magpie's nest. Deary me, the little devil. She must think she's a magpie or some such. <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've ever seen! <laughs> I find this one super hilarious because you wouldn't expect to see a hen stealing shiny objects since that's what magpies are believed to do. But it's just so hilarious to see those hens stealing his sandwiches and his keys. Especially how that hen stares at Pat's sandwiches for a few seconds before making its move. This one almost made it into number one on this list, but there's just one episode that is just so hilarious and just had to be on the list. But this one deserves the number two spot because it never fails to make me laugh. Just fancy, a magpie hen. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a thing? And my number one Postman Pat episode is... The Sheep in the Cloverfield. It's a cloudy morning in Greendale, but the sun brightens up and Pat is having a late day after his van gets stuck in the mud. After Peter Fogg gets him out with his tractor, Pat carries on with his rounds, only to be stopped by Ted Glenn, asking for help to get the sheep back in their own field after they escape in the clover field. Some fools left a gate open. I bet it's those campers. The sheep have got into the clover field. It'll kill them if they eat too much. Oh, I love sheep. They're so woolly and cuddly and so friendly. Indeed they are, Sue. Indeed they are. This is the first time I've ever seen Pat not actually do his rounds because he was delayed by other things, like getting stuck in the mud before collecting the letters, helping Ted Glenn round up sheep, dodging a ball. What's that funny noise? Hey, oh, it's that ball. Run! Oh! Oh! Hey, wait for me! fetching the doctor after Ted sprained his ankle, and then taking Ted back home afterwards. Magpie Hen almost made it to number one on the list, but I felt that Sheep in the Cloverfield was just funnier than Magpie Hen, and for those reasons I've listed. And I find it funny how the campers were to blame for the sheep escape in their own field, since the campers tend to leave the gate open. And this is one of those things that actually does happen in real life. People go for a walk in the country or camping, they go through fields and they forget to shut the gate when they've gone through it. This is something that happens in everyday country life, and this episode exploits it. With many delays and sheep and bulls and doctors, this episode, I felt, deserved the number one spot on my list. <laughs> We've left the gate open now. We're as bad as the campers. That's a lovely list you had, Dalek44. Thank you very much for looking after me today. I feel so much better now. Anytime, Sue. Well, it's a shame that Ken Barry is gone now, but like all the other actors I've made tributes to, his legacy will live on forever. And Postman Pat is a prime example of his legacy and why no one will ever forget him. It's a real shame that Ken Barry has passed away this year, but his legacy will live on in this show. In the classic episodes, anyway. And with Ken Barry's voice, Ivor Woods directing and John Cunliffe's writing, Postman Pat will always be one of the best children's TV shows of my childhood and any other people's childhood. And until next time, this is Don Paul Four and Sue saying, Bye bye, bye everybody. everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Can I give you a kiss, Dalek 44? Yeah, go on then. Mwah. Through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside, as he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat Jess is his cat Jess is his cat And it's always been like that And it's always been like that Well, I don't like to blub 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 <laughs> <sighs> okay.
Yes, a bump on the head. <laughs>